All right, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to be talking about other indeterminate forms. And so I'll be doing using Lothi Cal's rule for some questions that you might not see in AP Calculus. All right, so just to remind you, you know, all of these things are indeterminate forms. And, you know, you should probably be familiar with computing 0 over 0 and infinity over infinity limits from AP Calculus. But maybe you're interested in, you know, what does infinity minus infinity look like? Why is that not 0? You know, what about infinity to the zero? Why is that not one? I thought everything to the zero was one. Okay, so, I mean, you've already seen that infinity to the zero is not always one because that's the same as infinity over infinity, but that's a different discussion. Okay, so let's look at some indeterminate forms that aren't, you know, the typical AP calculus one. So I've got a quick example for us. Okay, so let's do an infinity minus infinity. You can see that if I was to, you know, say what's happening as x approaches one, I'm getting two things that are approaching infinity. I think from the respective sides that you would be approaching infinity minus infinity, and from the other side it would be negative infinity minus negative infinity. But I don't think that's super important. Uh, what I'm going to tell you is, okay, what we need to do is get a common denominator here. So I'm going to do a little... Okay, so I got them together with a common denominator, but maybe I'll actually, you know, distribute out that. And we've got x log of x minus x plus 1 divided by x minus 1 multiplied by log of x. And look, this one turned into a 0 minus 1 plus 1 divided by 0 times 0. That's a 0 divided by 0 limit. Okay, so I'm going to use L'Hopital's rule. So I'm going to take the derivative of the top and the bottom, and it's just going to be a little more involved than, you know, the usual AP calculus one, but we're not scared. That's why you came to watch this video. So take the derivative of x, that's 1, leave log x the same, then add in, leaving x the same, multiplying by the derivative of 1 over x. Wait a second, or derivative of log, that's 1 over x, multiplied by x, that's going to be 1. Okay, and then the derivative of negative x is negative 1, and the derivative of plus 1 is plus 0. Then I'm going to divide by, uh, who knows, this might need a little more room here. I'm going to say this will be multiplied by leave x minus 1 the same, multiply by the derivative of log of x, then add in, taking the derivative of x minus 1, multiply, uh, yeah, leaving log x the same. Okay, there we go. And what is going on here? I think I'm going to need to do more algebra. Yeah, I'm going to need to do more algebra, and I'm going to actually clear out this plus 1, minus 1, plus 0, because I don't think that's actually helping anything. And I might also get rid of that 1 there and rewrite the x minus 1 times 1 over x as, you know, x minus 1 divided by x. So x minus 1 divided by x, and then I might, you know, just move that log x over here so it's a little closer. And looks like I only moved part of that, so I didn't want that for it's rewritten it. Oh, well. All right. And wait a second. I feel like I can do some cancellation here. You know, I could, you know, kind of plug in and say, hey, it's going to 0 over 0 again and do L'Hopital's rule again. But I think what I'm interested in doing is what's going to happen? Oh, no, that's not going to be good. I feel like I made an algebra error. Yep, totally made an algebra error. I forgot there was a plus in there, right? I think there had originally been a plus. And so now I need to get going at a, at a common, denominator, common denominator type situation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this x log x divided by x so I could then combine them. Yeah, that'll be, that'll be good. Natural log of x. And then if I'm, well, I'll just write it out. So x minus 1 plus, the, plus x times the log of x all divided by an x. What I could do is I could, you know, throw that x back up to the numerator, and that would be, that would be helpful. Now this is the type of thing, and I'm going to need to just afford myself some more room because I went off the shot. But this is the type of thing that if I kind of plugged in on x going towards 1, I would be getting 0 divided by 0 again. But I'm pretty sure that if I just use L'Hopital's rule one more time, okay, 
I would be able to get that this was equal to the limit as x approached 1 of, okay, I know how to take the derivative of x log x, so I'll take the derivative of x and leave the log the same. Then I will leave the x the same and multiply by the derivative of natural log of x, which is going to be 1 over x, so x divided by x is 1. Okay. Divided by the derivative of x is 1, and then the derivative of x log x, I just took that, so that's 1 plus log of x. one. And now when I plug in x going towards 1, I'm going to get the log of 1, which is 0, plus 1, divided by, well, the log of 1 is still 0 in the denominator, so 1 plus 0 plus 1, and that's equal to 1 half. So that's an example of infinity minus infinity not equaling 0, but going towards a half. Now here's one I really like. This is an infinity times zero limit. And we can see as x approaches infinity, x is going to infinity and 1 over x is going to zero. And we know that sine of zero is zero. So this is going towards, you know, what we would call infinity times zero, which is an indeterminate form. And, you know, there's, I can't do a Vitale's rule on it because there's no division, right? But if I rewrite this using division rather than multiplication, I could say, wait a second, this is the limit as x approaches infinity of sine of 1 over x. And that x, I could put it in the denominator as a 1 over x. I can do that, right? And, but I know that in the, you know, this is going to go to 0 divided by 0. And in the world of derivative taking, it's much easier to call it x to the negative 1 than it is to call it 1 over x. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. Call that x to the negative 1. Cool. And so this is going towards 0 over 0. Meaning, I can use Locatelle's rule. And so I'm going to take the derivative of the top and the bottom separately. Derivative of cosine is cosine. Leave the inside the same. And then multiply by the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of x to the negative 1 with respect to x is negative x to the negative 2. And then I'm going to take the derivative of x to the negative 1, and that will be negative x to the negative 2. I think you might see where this is going from here. Okay, I'm going to do some cancellation. And this is going to be the equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of the cosine of x to the negative 1. Might be a little easier to look at it that way. Whoops, ran off my shot there. Be all right, though. And as x approaches infinity, 1 over x goes towards 0. So this is going towards cosine of 0, which is 1. So that's a situation where infinity times 0 was not equal to 0. All right, the last example I've got for you is going to involve a, a little bit more algebraically intensive manipulation. This is a 1 to the infinity limit, right? Because as x approaches 0, 1 plus x is going towards 1, and 1 divided by x is going towards infinity. Okay, so what we're going to need to do, do is use logs to reshape this equation. And kind of the key here is that I say, okay, I'm going to find this limit eventually. I'm determined to do it. So I'm going to call this limit, I don't know, some letter, like w, because I really want to find it. And then I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. Okay. And so, well, what's, what's going on there? Yeah, I'm going to need to take the natural log of both sides. And this seems like the thing I'm going to need some more room on. So I'm going to take the natural log of w equals. Now, because natural log is a continuous function on its domain, I can say that the log of the limit as x approaches 0 from the positive side of whatever's on the inside of the limit is going to be the same as the limit of that log. So I'm just going to do that right now. And let's do, that was just something that I threw in the fine print at the beginning of my calculus course, was that you know for a continuous function or a continuous composition of limits, then you know, we can just pass the limit through to the inside of the composition. So this is the limit as x approaches 0 from the positive side of the natural log of 1 plus x to the 1 over x power. But we do have the log property you know, from our algebra class or whatever that the natural log of a to the b 
is equal to b times the natural log of a. And of course, that went off my shot. I'm just using a, a narrow window that I'm used to. And, all right, let's get that moved over a little bit and say that's equal to, yeah, it's going to be plenty of room, b times the natural log of a. So you, I'll have this equaling the limit as x approaches 0 from the positive side of 1 over x times the natural log of 1 plus x. And now we're really in business, right? Because as x approaches 0, log of 1 plus x approaches 0. And I could just, you know, maybe write this as, you know, log of 1 plus x divided by x. I'm going to need a little bit longer fraction bar, but I can do that. And this is the type of thing that's going to 0 divided by 0. So I'm going to use L'Hopital's rule. And so this will equal the limit as x approached 0 from the positive side of the natural log, or the derivative of natural log of 1 over x, or 1 plus x is 1 over 1 plus x, divided by the derivative of x with respect to x is 1. So this is all going to 1 divided by 1 divided by 1. It's just going to be a limit of 1. So that one, 1 to the infinity did equal 1. But had we had 2 over x, I feel like that would have maybe changed the nature of the problem. And 2 over x is our exponent. We could get it coming back something besides 1. I think that's going to be all the examples I've got for you. That's kind of the way that these other indeterminate form limits work out, is that, you know, sometimes you just I have to hit them with a little bit of algebra. Sometimes you have... wait a second. Oh man, that's embarrassing. Glad I caught it before I ended the video. But what if I just solve for? I've solved for the natural log of w is equal to one, which means that w is going to equal e. And I believe that at the very beginning of this, that's what I was going for, was at the beginning of the course, the calculus course. I did tell you that the definition of e was the limit as I think I probably called it. P or N or something went towards zero from the positive side of one plus P to the one over P power, and that's that's what we're going to have. That's part of the reason why okay. using Lopetel's rule. Okay. But that's really all I've got for you for this video.